All right, paper crafters. Today, I'm giving a quick uh, little session on the tools of the trade. Um, just things you need in order to to enjoy a good paper crafting session. Um, now, these aren't all the things you need. A lot of it. These are basic tools. I mean, you can accumulate your toolbox as you, as you become more experienced and you learn more things. These, uh, and I'm really all you really need is uh, this here, the um, a nice set of scissors or uh, shears as these are. Uh, these are really, really good. Scissors are the most versatile tool in your toolbox. Um, these, of course, are one of the more expensive sets of tools. I mean, uh, one of the more expensive sets of scissors that you can find. Um, I like them because they're very sharp. Uh, they have very ergonomic. Um, and you can use them just to cut really straight, really long, long periods of time. Oh, it's getting a little rusty. I need to take better care of that. Um, but yeah, scissors is the number one tool in your toolbox for getting started in paper crafts. Um, second, I probably should have switched this around, uh, is the scalpel, the blade, the X-Acto knife, the razor. This one is the second most important tool in the toolbox because this is what you're going to do a lot of the little detailed cutting, um, a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, tricky, the round cutting, the trying to get inside the model itself cutting, and having a good point is always important. Um, and of course, with the the blade, you're going to have to have replacement blades, and these. Are, I wouldn't say they're super cheap, but um, they're not that expensive. Uh, I, I don't really buy a lot of these anymore because I've I kind of taken to sharpening this blade because I I'm kind of I hate it when you get a you get a blade and the the tip starts to get to dull and you still have a quarter about three quarters of an inch. Of good razor blade that you can use to cut so before I used to just crack off the tips and then just crack it off as I went along but I found that that was um, dangerous for one thing and very un inefficient inefficient because the blade would just get blunt and more stubby as you went along so uh, with a a uh, kit I ordered it came with uh, sharpening stones and this is just an example of a sharpening a whetstone rather um, I don't know what grit this one is I want to say it's 600 grit and you just kind of I'll, I'll, I'll save that for another video but um that's how I learned how to save money and to utilize the blade to its fullest and not throw it away as much um, so that's the second most important tool, um, and I should probably have done this again. Uh, the third most important tool will probably be the straight edge, and this is basically a, just a metal ruler, or a metal, uh, you can find just a metal piece sheet of straight metal that you'll use for cutting along edges, and when your blade's so sharp, good grief, uh, just cutting along edges, and straight lines a lot of a lot of uh boxy paper crafts out there or just just you want to get that nice crisp line um right now i'm trying to build my technique so that i can use my arm to just cut straight and not get a wavy line it's kind of a technique you also you learn in in uh when you're drawing is how to just draw through and just instead of using your wrist you kind of draw with your whole arm and you bring it back so I'm kind of using that technique for uh, paper crafts as well so the straight edge is a uh, very another very useful tool for making the job easier the next one we're going to talk about is the, uh, the tweezers now there's all kinds of tweezers these are the tweezers that I use these are the reverse clamping tweezers um, that's one of the names for them. Other names are like plier tweezers. Uh, there's a lot of names for them actually, but I mean, ultimately, a tweezer is a tweezer. Clamping tweezers are these ones because they pinch 
with uh, they pitch by themselves and so when you're trying to glue two pieces together you kind of just slide them in between and then it holds them for you and you can go do other things while it holds and if you watch some of my videos you can see that I use this a lot it's a very very useful tool tweezers alone are a very useful tool but clamping tweezers are extremely useful next I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna go to this one next because because uh, why not uh, this is um, what I use for scoring paper and for scoring paper what simply that means is that you're putting a you're putting a little dent into the paper to make the paper fold easier and um this is a ballpoint stylus is what it's called uh, because it has a little ball at the end and it's used for this is originally came from a kit from um, my wife bought a kit to paint nails and these are the these are I guess the brushes they use to do the little designs on the nails and so she never used this one so I decided that it would be perfect for creasing paper uh, there are other ways people crease paper. You can use you can use the end of a toothpick. You can use a pencil. People use a lot of people use an empty ballpoint pen. Uh, I've done that a couple times. I'm not a huge fan of that technique per se because sometimes the ball could get rolling again and heat up whatever dry ink is left inside, and then you'll have a big line on your on your paper craft that you were trying so hard to build so perfectly and now it's ruined because of a ballpoint pen that still had ink in it. So yeah, I use these stylus. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the, the dull knife either or scoring lightly. Like some people just go over lightly with a, a razor blade and a dull razor blade, but I don't like how the paper tears uh, with that. You could see you can see the white from inside the paper so I just like to kind of crush the paper with the ballpoint stylus this I find to be the best tool in my experience in my some odd years of paper crafting so now we'll get to the, the gluing side and I've only recently started using a paintbrush to apply glue and I like I actually I, I like using the the paintbrush it makes things so much easier um, you just dip in the glue and then you kind of paint the tab with glue and it's pretty accurate it's a lot cleaner and it's a lot quicker the paintbrush glue applicator the best this is what I used to use for applying glue a toothpick or any kind of pointy metal I, I used to use the what would you call it a hole a hole puncher but an all type thing a little metal tip until I lost it but uh, it was it started off with the toothpick and what you do with the toothpick is basically the same thing with a paintbrush dip the toothpick into the into the um, glue and then you just slide the toothpick along the tab and I find with with uh, the toothpick and other modes like this of applying glue it really spreads the glue evenly and you, you have a considerable amount of control when it comes to spreading the glue along the tab so I still I still use the toothpick every now and then but I am also a huge fan of the paintbrush this um, basically just a container where you put the glue in and this is the glue this is Eileen's tacky glue it's by far the best glue I have ever used when it comes to paper crafts I've used super glue I've used hot glue I've used school glue I used rubber cement I've used glue sticks and Eileen's tacky glue is is superior for many reasons one of the reasons is that it stays tacky for a long period of time and it holds it holds fast it holds really well it holds fast as soon as you um, put two sides together but 
the benefit of it remaining tacky is if you don't get it right, if you don't get the paper lined up the first time, you can pull it apart and adjust several times until it finally, you finally get it, you get the tabs lined up the way you like. So Eileen's Tacky Glue is a must have. Another thing that you should consider having around is a little, little uh, jar, cup, tin, whatever of water. And this is so you can clean off your glue from your brush, uh, clean the glue off your, from your tools, clean the glue off of your fingers. And because you'll have water and you'll have glue, always keep a rag handy. This is, I cannot stress how important it is to keep rags around. Um, if I don't have a rag, I'm probably wiping off glue on my jeans, wiping off glue on my shirt, wiping off glue on the table, the mat, whatever. It's, uh, it's really just convenient having a rag about because you can, you can just wipe it away and you don't have to worry about ruining your clothes, ruining your workstation or anything and you can immediately clean off your tools when they get a little too gummed up from all the glue that you are using. So with all that said, I wanna go ahead and um, just show you some examples of the tools in action. So let's go ahead and put these aside for now. And I have here printed out, and this, uh, I guess I should have gone over the paper type. We'll go over paper types um, in another video but this is just regular printer paper and this is a this is Skeletoon from the Fold Up Toys website uh, that I downloaded just a, it's a very simple paper craft and I downloaded it just for this video and I'll probably make a video building it later but right now let's focus on the tools so this is the scissors and we're about to see the scissors in action I like scissors because you have a lot of control with how you're cutting stuff but what I don't like about scissors is when you get into the areas like this here right here and right here and right here you start to lose the control about how close you get to these little angles here and sometimes you can go too far and or sometimes you don't go far enough and when you cut it leaves uh, it leaves a little bit of tooth there so let's go ahead and uh, this is the scissors in action. See, you have a lot of control, especially when it comes to the curves. And then coming up to the edge, right there. And another th problem with scissors too is that when you start cutting out the corners, you start bending the paper. And if you're using thicker paper that doesn't bend so freely, you can sometimes end up ripping but this is regular copy paper so it's very forgiving and as you can see it, it's very easy but this is very very time consuming because when it comes to the curves you have to go very slow and then here's another part where the scissors might be a little too clunky for the uh, Part that we're cutting right there. So once again, talking about the corner and the scissors getting all uh, getting caught up right there in that little corner, and it forces this up, and you can rip the, pa the paper right there. And you don't want that. You want to keep the paper as good as possible, as on messed up so generally now what I do with the scissors is I'll use the scissors for the bulk of the work I'll just cut out the shape from the paper just to get all the extra paper out of the way and occasionally I'll Clip the edges just to make the future a little easier. We'll just cut that out, cut that out. So it makes quick work of all the extra paper that we don't need to concern ourselves with later. 
Let me just throw that away. And now, the straight edge and the blade, this is where this comes in handy. It's cutting out areas like this per se right here. You just line it up and just pull the blade along very smoothly and see, got that nice straight cut, very clean, very efficient. Sometimes you don't even need it and this is where I'm trying to enhance my skill a little bit is to do these small areas like this. And this is why you have to make sure that your blade is sharp. This blade should be sharp because I just sharpened it. And sometimes when it comes to a nice sharp blade, you don't have to press down as much. You kind of just glide it along like, like butter. See, just like that. And then the, the blade, this is where the blade excels in these little areas right here that you need to cut out. making quick work of all these tiny angles and little designs and the more you do this the better it becomes you'll know for like larger shapes you'll just be able to just move your hand and then for the smaller shapes you'll use just your fingers and your wrist it's a lot like drawing really I know we have a lot of artists out there Papercraft is an excellent tool to if you want to take a break from all of your drawing. Okay, so I just got to cut here. And there we go. See? So let's let's cut this arm out and we'll do the rest of the um, I'll show you the other tools that we can use so we're gonna cut the entire arm off and use this as an example of the next tools so that's the blade in action now we're gonna see this in action the uh, stylus the ballpoint stylus or the scorer as we would like to call it so you're gonna find um, scoring is when you when you make a dent or you press down on the uh, fold lines to make the paper fold easier. Because if I were to fold something like this by hand, I gotta do all that fancy stuff just to make it work. And if you do it wrong, then it just comes out kind of round and not as impressive. And on bigger models, it's easier to pre-score than it is to fold, just eyeball the fold and make sure and hope that you get it all right. Plus I noticed when um, you fold by hand, the paper does this bowing thing instead of a clean fold, as I'll, like, I'll show you right now. You just line up your straight edge along the line and now the, the point of the ball or the ball at the point <laughs> It's going to be off center, so you, you don't want to line up the straight edge on top of the uh, fold line. You want to line it up just a little bit off to the side because the side of the ball is going to press against the side of the straight edge and you want the center of the ball right on top of that line. So you're just going to be off center by a millimeter maybe. And then you run. The best way to do that is to just line it up right there so test make sure yeah and it's perfect now and then you just press down and pull back go over it a couple times and that way 
when you're using a, a ballpoint stylus, you're not losing the integrity of the ink or the color, and you're not weakening the uh, the paper by cutting it with the blade. It's still strong, it's still together, and it folds very nice. See, that was a very clean fold, folded over perfectly. And another thing is um, that I like is you can see where the folds, where the scores are. So I'm just gonna score this a couple times. Just hopefully we can see what it looks like on the back. You can see how it presses down on the back here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, right there, you can see those lines right there. So you can see how it presses through the paper. And um, let me see, yeah, right there, perfect. So you see those lines that left behind because of the scoring, and those are where it's gonna fold. Like that, put a lot of um, work into it. Will work for skin, because it's a skeleton. So you fold that over, made easy work with the scorer so you didn't have to fold it by hand and it made a clean fold. The paper is undisturbed so there's no bowing, no warping and it's, it's a good job. Good job because of the scorer. Uh, sometimes if you don't line it up right you get little, uh, you can see the other side. It's a very solvable problem. Just shave off a little bit with the razor. Oh, wait, I forgot there's one more tool that is a must-have when doing paper craft. So let me try and pull this out. If you don't want to cut it, and let's say there's not enough to cut on this side, but you have some of the white showing through from the other side, another important tool to have, a brush pen. All you do is simply just color on the back. Why is this? It shouldn't be dried out, but it is. So we'll just grab another one. That's not it. All right. So this one, this one's good. So you just cover the back of it along the edge where the white of the paper is gonna show through. And when you fold it over, it's almost, in, it's invisible. No one will notice it. And you can go dark, but a nice neutral color is always best too. Because say this wasn't black, say it was like uh, this guy here. Say we were using the QB City Titan, and I guess black would work, but um, over here it'd be too too obvious, too obvious. So you kind of want a neutral color. Neutral colors will work best because they're neutral. Something that isn't so apparent. See, like that, almost unnoticeable, and it's not even full black. So. That's a, that's a felt tip marker, another handy tool. So now I'm gonna show you how to use the tweezers, the paintbrush, and the toothpick. Let's get the top off of this. I'm gonna apply a little glue just into the little glue tray. Oops. So that's Eileen's tacky glue right there or aliens, just a little bit. And you can use the toothbrush, I mean the <laughs> toothbrush. <laughs> you can use the paintbrush, just dab a little bit here, and you're gonna spread it on. Makes quick work of it, the paintbrush does. Along the edge, and then fold it over and I can hold it or I can use the clamping tweezers the reverse clamp tweezers and have it hold for me which is what I prefer to do and that's why this is handy because then I can just leave that and I can go do other things you know I can cut other things I can score other things while this is doing that and once it's done you just remove it and it is nice and held. Um, let's let's uh, let's use the toothpick next. So you got your toothpick out. Put that in the water before it gets messed up. 
That's why you want to take care of your tools. You take care of your tools and your tools will take care of you. They really appreciate them um, when you handle them nicely and treat them nicely. There's more and more evidence that um, inanimate objects seem to not be as inanimate as we think. There's some kind of essence or awareness that everything has. So with the, uh, and, and the toothpick is good for getting into those tight paces. Say uh, you gotta get in right here. Just get your little toothpick and you get in right there. Get your clamp. Clamp it down. And if there's any extra glue, get your finger and just wipe it off on your rag. That's why your rag is important. You don't want to have any uh, residual glue specks on your finger because then it, if I did that and I went back to my my paper craft, I would be getting glue little globs all over it and that is annoying because if that happens, you got to get your razor blade, scrape them off. Let me see. I'm going to show you what happens when that happens. Let's see. I got glue on my fingers. I went over here and you can see all the glue just building up right there and it's like oh man now what do I do if you're lucky and you catch it in time you can scrape it off but if you're not sometimes it gets stuck and it looks like I'm lucky and it also helps to have a sharp razor blade because then you, you can just shave it off see just shaving it off I'm not damaging the paper just trying to get off as much as I can. And that saves you from having to build a whole new model. And so that works with the uh, toothpick. We got that little little spot right there. But um, if you don't have a paintbrush and you only have a tweezer, or I mean you only have a toothpick, the same uh, idea applies. You're going to just get your tweezer I mean why do I keep saying tweezer you're gonna get your toothpick and just spread the glue like that just gonna spread the glue and this is what I was talking about how it spreads evenly it's more efficient because it kind of just scrapes the glue along and it leaves only the amount that needs to be there and we press that together Hold it and sit. Let it sit for a while. So uh, those are the basic tools that you need. And it's nice and held in place. It's, and uh, I guess let's wrap this up. The scissors, the most versatile tool in your toolbox, uh, followed closely by the blade, the scalpel, the razor, followed by the straight edge, the ruler, the guide that will set you free. Then we had the clamp, the reverse clamping tweezers, which uh, if you don't have reverse clamping tweezers, um, any tweezers work really. Uh, oh, also, I recommend getting one of these kinds of things because get in that hard to reach the L tweezers gets into that those awkward angles where the reverse clamping tweezers can't can't reach. And then you got your just typical tweezers, which uh, these work really really well. Uh, you just have to hold them yourself, as opposed to the reverse clamping tweezers, which close themselves. Then we have the ballpoint stylus for scoring your paper, which is the best in my most humble opinion. Um, you can also use uh, really long stitching needles, knitting needles to score, but once again, you have a sharp point and you risk tearing, ripping, cutting your paper when you do stuff like that. Um, what did we have also? We had the glue, Aileen's Tacky Glue, the felt tip marker for concealing the blemishes, glue tray, water and our 
rag. Oh, I forgot the toothpick. And the toothpick for glue application. And the paintbrush for applying glue. So that there is your standard. I would say this is above standard for, um, for paper crafting. I would say your standard kit would consist of something like this. Something like that. There's your standard kit right there. And your very basic kit, we're looking at this. This is your most basic kit right there. This is what you need basically to get started. So I hope you found this video informative. I hope it helps with any of your future paper crafting endeavors. Uh, once again, the uh, Skeletoon, you could find that at FoldUpToys.com. Uh, you can find a lot more than that. You can find over 150 paper toys at FoldUpToys.com. Don't forget to join our Discord. Uh, you can find the Discord link at NeonNeuron.com. And join us next time for some more paper crafting fun. Thanks for watching, everybody. It has been fun. Thank you.